Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with Rodian Schwartz and GP Power Supplies. This presentation will take you step-by-step -step through both basic and advanced features on the NGP series power supplies. The NGP is a family of multi-channel DC power supplies, available in either two or four channel models. In addition to providing basic DC power, the NGP also supports features such as ramped and arbitrary output, built-in statistics and logging, input and output triggers, and remote sensing. Advanced protection functions are implemented for avoiding potentially dangerous output levels, and the NGP supports remote control over USB, Ethernet, GPIB, and Wi-Fi. The NGP uses standard banana-style connectors on the front panel. In addition to the red and blue connectors for supplying voltage, each channel also has a pair of black connectors for sense leads, something we'll discuss later in this presentation. The NGP outputs are both floating and galvanically isolated. This means that the NGP outputs can be used as separate and independent power supplies. This in turn makes it possible to connect the channel outputs in series or in parallel. By connecting the outputs in series, the NGP can provide higher voltages than would be possible with a single channel. And by connecting them in parallel, higher currents are supported. For example, we could combine four 64 volt channels in series in order to get an output voltage of 250 volts. Or we could combine four 20 amp channels in parallel for combined output current of up to 80 amps. Voltage and sense connections can also be made on the rear of the NGP using terminal blocks. These contain sockets for both voltage and sense wires. Note that both front and rear voltage connectors should not be used at the same time. To enter voltage and current for each channel, start by pressing the home button. The values for voltage and current limit can be entered either using the touch screen or with the rotary knob. Confirm values with either the check mark key or by pressing the knob. Voltage and current are most often configured individually per channel, but multiple channels can be linked or tracked. Tracking means that voltage and current values on one channel are automatically applied to all tracked channels. To configure tracking, use Settings, Device, and Tracking, and then choose which channels to track. Tracking is then enabled or disabled globally for all tracked channels. Once voltage and current values have been configured, the channel buttons are used to enable channels individually, and the Output button is used to turn on all enabled channels. Channel keys are backlit with different colors to indicate their operating mode, something we'll come back to in just a moment. The default NGP display shows all channels simultaneously, but the Expand button can be used to view a single channel in larger format. In Expanded View, statistics in the form of max, min, and average power, voltage, and current are shown on the right. Stats can be reset and restarted by clicking on the Stats counter. To return to the collapsed view, use the Collapse Soft key or the Back Hard key. The NGP displays the output voltage, output current, and output power updated in real time. For each channel, configured values are shown in boxes, and the measured or read back values are shown above them. The color of the displayed values indicates the operating mode for each channel. White is used in editing mode, that is, when the output is disabled. Values in green indicate that the channel is operating in constant voltage mode, and values in red indicate constant current mode. Let's pause for a minute to explain what we mean by constant voltage and constant current. Normally, the user of a power supply configures a fixed output voltage. In this case, the output current depends on the load resistance, as per Ohm's law. This is called constant voltage mode because the supply will hold the voltage constant even if the load resistance, and therefore the current, change. Note that if the load resistance decreases, the amount of current supplied will increase. A large drop in load resistance could therefore lead to current that's high enough to cause damage. One solution to this problem is an electronic fuse that turns power off when maximum current is reached. Instead of disabling the output entirely, another solution is to limit the current to a maximum value by decreasing the output voltage. In this case, the supply is said to be operating in constant current mode. Whether a supply is operating in constant voltage or constant current mode is determined by the user-specified output current limit. There's no button or menu item to toggle between these two modes. Let's look at an example of this on the NGP. 
we can figure the output voltage to be 2 volts and enter a current of 400 milliamps. After enabling the output, the NGP will hold the output voltage steady or constant at 2 volts, even if the current changes, as long as the current remains below the configured current threshold of 400 milliamps. Since we're in constant voltage mode, the values of voltage, current, and power are all displayed in green. Now let's decrease the current value from 400 milliamps to 300 milliamps. The output voltage still starts out at 2 volts and remains constant when the output current changes, but only as long as the current limit of 300 milliamps is not exceeded. If, however, more than 300 milliamps would be drawn, the NGP automatically switches to constant current mode and lowers the output voltage until the output current does not exceed the configured current limit. When operating in constant current mode, values of power, voltage, and current are displayed in red. Although power supplies are usually operated in constant voltage mode so as to provide a fixed voltage, there are cases where we may want to have an output voltage that dynamically changes based on a user configured pattern or sequence. The NGP supports two different functions for dynamically changing the output voltage, namely ramp and arbitrary. Let's take a closer look at both of these. As the name implies, ramp is used to create a continuous rise or ramp in output voltage. The output voltage starts at zero and then rises to a defined voltage over a ramping time from 10 milliseconds to 10 seconds, after which the voltage remains constant. Ramp settings are configured on a per channel basis by pressing the settings key and then choosing the channel and ramp. The ramp time must then be entered. Recall that this is the time needed to go from zero volts to the configured output voltage. After enabling ramp, the ramp icon will appear in the channel display. Unlike ramp, which linearly increases the voltage from zero to a defined value, arbitrary switches the NGP output between different discrete voltage levels or current thresholds. Each one of these levels has a user-defined value and duration, and the sequence can be repeated multiple times. To use arbitrary waveforms, a profile must be defined. This can be done on the NGP using settings, device, arb editor. An arbitrary profile consists of a series of points with values for voltage, current, time, and whether or not interpolation is used between the points. The plus and minus buttons can be used to add or remove points from the table. Two additional parameters are also required. The first is repetition count, that is, how many times to repeat this sequence. If the repeat count is finite, the end behavior must be defined. The output can be turned off, or the last value in the sequence can be held. Sequences created with the ARB editor can also be saved and loaded within the NGP. ARB editor is found under the device menu, but the individual channel menus are used to configure the waveforms for sending. Click on Arbitrary and then on a row and choose an existing ARB profile. As shown here, multiple ARB profiles can be loaded and executed sequentially. And for each profile, Sequence Repetitions defines how many times to repeat each profile. When configuration is complete, use Load Sequence to prepare the sequence for sending. Then turn Arbitrary on and enable output. The Arbitrary icon will appear in the channel bar when an arbitrary sequence is being used. The next topic is protection functions. These are used to protect the attached load from excessive voltage, current, or power by disabling the output when a user-defined threshold is crossed. Protection functions are configured by pressing settings and then the channel and output. Protection functions are configured and enabled or disabled independently for each channel. Both overvoltage and overpower protection are activated when a user-defined voltage or power threshold is crossed. As with other forms of protection, the channel is turned off when the protection is activated and output has to be manually restarted. Visual indications in the form of blinking icons appear in the channel display when either overvoltage or overpower protection has been activated. Overcurrent protection, also called an electronic fuse, is activated when the current drawn by the load exceeds a configured threshold. Note that unlike overvoltage and overpower, the current limit is not entered in the protection menu, but is taken from the main voltage and current settings. As before, if protection is enabled, the channel is turned off and must be manually restarted. There are two delay parameters associated with an electronic fuse. Fuse delay time is the time between when the overcurrent threshold is crossed 
and when the output is deactivated. Fuse delay at output on is the amount of time the NGP will wait after power on before applying the fuse. This can be used to prevent the fuse from being activated by high inrush currents. Fuses can also be linked to other channels. In this case, if overcurrent is activated on one channel, all linked channels are disabled. And like overvoltage and overpower, a blinking icon in the channel display indicates that overcurrent protection has been activated. Safety limits are another type of protection that limits the configurable range of output voltage and or current. Safety limits prevent the user from being able to configure or enter values outside of a defined range. They don't disable the output like the other protection types that we mentioned earlier, but an audible alert is sounded whenever a user tries to configure a value that's outside of these limits. Safety limits are configured and enabled per channel in the form of maximum and minimum values of voltage and current. Now that we've covered the basic functions of the NGP, let's look at some of the more advanced functions. These include output delay, remote sense, data logging, digital input and output triggers, analog in, and remote interfacing or control. We'll start with output delay. Normally, voltage is present at the outputs immediately after an output is enabled. However, the NGP also allows you to configure a delay between when the output is enabled and when voltage is present at the output terminals. During this delay, the channel key blinks green and DLY appears in the channel display. Next, let's talk about remote sense. The cables connected to a power supply's outputs have resistance, and this will cause a voltage drop between the power supply and the load. In many cases, this very small drop can be ignored, but it can become significant with high currents or small load resistances. Remote sense is a method used to monitor and compensate for the voltage drop in the supply leads. In remote sense, two leads carry the current as normal, but two additional sense leads are used to measure the voltage at the load. Because these sense leads are connected to a very high impedance in the supply, there's almost no current flow in these leads, and therefore almost no voltage drop. Based on the readings made using these sense leads, the supply can adjust the output to obtain the desired voltage at the load. On the NGP, remote sensing is configured in each channel's menu under Output Remote Sensing. There are two modes of remote sensing. In External, Sense leads must be attached before the output is enabled in order to prevent overvoltage or unregulated output. This is also the recommended mode when output is set to less than 1 volt. In auto mode, remote sense is enabled automatically when the sense leads are attached. Recall that sense leads are available on both the front and the rear of the NGP, and a small icon will appear above a channel when remote sensing is active. The measured or readback values of voltage, current, and power can be logged to a CSV or comma-separated value file for export or analysis. Logging is configured globally for all channels under Settings, Device, Logging. The logging interval and duration or mode are configurable, and the log data can be stored either on a USB stick or internally. To turn logging on and off, simply enable logging. Another useful feature is digital input-output triggers. The NGP has eight independent trigger lines located on the rear panel. Each of these lines can be used as an input or output trigger, and this makes it easy to integrate the NGP with other devices. For example, an external event could be used to turn the NGP output on, or the NGP could inform another device when a protection threshold is crossed. There are a wide variety of trigger conditions or actions, including turning the output on or off, having the voltage or current exceed a user-defined threshold, crossing a protection threshold, or running an arbitrary sequence. Digital input-output triggers are configured using Settings Device Digital I.O. Trigger. Each pin or line is individually enabled. When configuring lines, choose the channel associated with that line and the trigger level, the direction, and then the mode or action taken for each trigger. In this example, the loaded arbitrary waveform will be started on channel 1 when a high voltage level is received on I.O. line 1. The available modes depend on the direction and configuration of each channel, so please see the NGP documentation for complete details on all trigger actions. In analog input, the channel output level is a function of an input voltage rather than being a value defined through the graphical user interface. 
This input voltage must be in the range of 0 to 5 volts and is sensed at the analog input connector on the rear panel. Analog input is configured under each channel's menu and you can choose whether voltage or current is regulated by the analog input voltage. Let's look at an example of how analog input works by attaching channel 2's output to the analog in pins for channel 1. When there's zero voltage supplied to channel 1's analog input, channel 1's output is also zero volts. But as we increase the analog input voltage, the output voltage on channel 1 also rises proportionally, reaching the maximum channel output voltage when the maximum analog in voltage of 5 volts is reached. The last topic we'll cover is remote interfaces. The NGP supports four different methods of remote access, USB and LAN, GPIB, and Wi-Fi. All of these interfaces support programmatic control in which standardized Skippy commands can be used to configure the NGP and retrieve results. LAN and Wi-Fi connections also enable remote GUI access over VNC, as well as web browser access for administrative purposes. To learn more about how to create and execute programmatic control of the NGP, please see the documentation for a complete programming reference and examples. Let's end with a brief summary. The NGP is a family of benchtop DC power supplies that's available in both two and four channel models. It's easily configurable via the touchscreen interface and knobs on the front panel, but can also be remotely controlled, either programmatically or via a remote GUI. Other useful features we've covered in this presentation include ramp and arbitrary output, different types of protection functions, remote sense, data logging, digital input output, and analog in. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with Rodian Schwartz NGP Power Supplies. If you'd like to learn more about the NGP or power supplies in general, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.